Wait, I know what you're thinking. Don't just swipe away from the video and start disliking it. Let me explain. In winter 2022, the seasonal anime chart was looking really good. But if you noticed, Demon Slayer, Attack on Titan, and Dress of Darling were the three shows that made up the entire winter 2022 season. If you look at the popularity charts for every single other anime, you can see how less popular the anime or show was. Pretty much the big three were the only animes that were being talked about during the winter 2022 season. So if you really think about it, there was just a lot of anime that was just left behind. Now talking about Dress Up Darling, as I stated in my previous video, I described it as a horny as fuck anime. I don't necessarily dislike the show, in fact, I thought it was still a pretty good show. However, there was just more things that were better watching Dress Up Darling. So if Dress Up Darling is not the romance anime that I liked the most, what was the best romance that I personally had? Well, if you already know, it's Takaki song. FBI, open up! So now you might be wondering, why the fuck would you like that shit better than Dress Up Darling? Like I said before, a lot of shows that season were overshadowed because of the big three. Somewhat like Kaguya Sama season 3, Takagi san season 3 also hit its peak. Nobody really seemed to notice the show, but even before the big three, it wasn't as popular compared to other shows. So if you didn't know already, Takagi san the first season actually started airing in 2018. It's just about two kids named Nishikata and Takagi san, and Nishikata's goal is always to get back at Takagi san for always teasing him. Seems like a really simple story, right? To be honest, I can see the appeal as to why people didn't watch after season 1. A lot of people believed that the show was lackluster at best, or at best a decent show. Not much really happened between the main duo, and it didn't seem like the two would improve much in their relationship with each other. In specifically shonen anime, repetition is often praised. It's just what a shonen is. Here, when repetition continues throughout the entire series, people believed that the story was just not really interesting. It caused a lot of people to pretty much have no motivation in watching the second season when it came out. 2019, the show seemed exactly the same. However, if you did continue to watch after season 1, you'll notice something slightly different. Where was the amount of teasing compared to the first season? If you compared from the second to the first season, you can notice that the relationships between the two have already changed a little bit. There are times when Nishikata does tease Takagi back, even though it might be done unconsciously. There's something between the two that's growing, and when the final episode came, the situation had changed entirely. The feelings of Nishikata and Takagi get closer, and they hope to become better at realizing each other's feelings. Now for the premiere of Season 3. With the big 3 on display, I don't think even most fans of Season 2 seem to realize that Season 3 was happening. Season 3 starts very similar to Season 1 and Season 2, but again, their relationship had progressed so much. And just like Season 2, the situation kept changing. Nishikata himself grows in character and realizes how much he needs Takagi in his life. The journey that the two of them had had since the beginning makes him realize this. Without Takagi, his life wouldn't be as fun, and even if she has been teasing him for so long, it wouldn't fit if he didn't have those things. This happens when he has to be away from Takagi for a little bit in the show, and it shows how much he has cared for Takagi compared to the first parts of the first season. He tries to give gifts to her, and even ask her out multiple times in the show. He's done so much ever since Takagi began to shape his heart. When I saw these scenes, I couldn't keep myself from not smiling in those scenes. The amount of progression that I had seen between the two grew more than just teasing. It was a wholesome relationship. Another thing was also its music. Within prominent scenes, you can tell if a scene was really funny. Sometimes there wouldn't be any music at all. It would just be total silence, just to signify the seriousness between the main two. It made you want to root for the main two. 
The original soundtracks in both the original two seasons made it feel natural, while the new soundtracks in season 3 gave a new feel to the anime, while also making it feel like the show was filled with Takagi's teasing, Yuko Ohara's insert songs, as well as Rie Takahashi's songs, made it feel like Takagi's words were flowing throughout the song. It emphasized how much Nishikata means to her, and in some cases how much Takagi meant for Nishikata. For all those people who were impressed with Chainsaw Man's 12 individual ending songs, which they were pretty good, there is a total of 24 ending songs, including the movie, in this show. That's a lot of dedication. Something that I also wanted to talk about in season 3 is Takagi-san's jealousy. In previous seasons, she was always around with Nishikata, trying to get his attention. However, when some girls started talking to Nishikata just as normal classmates, and also underclassmen, her character grows. She begins to feel upset over herself and wants Nishikata to herself. She even gets angry and also shuts herself off from Nishikata for a period of time because of Nishikata's interactions. This is something that we have never saw Takagi do before, and what made it even better was that Nishikata himself knew that there was something wrong with Takagi. He tries to make up with Takagi and asks if there was any problems, even though Takagi herself had never talked to him about those problems. Even though he was relieved from teasing, it didn't feel right that Takagi was just not there. He knew something had to change, and he tries to do so much so that he can have a better relationship with Takagi. These moments not only give character improvement, the process in which the two want to have a better relationship is very wholesome. The school festival arc in season 3, as well as the final episode, kept me smiling. For the school festival arc, not only was Nishikata the biggest clutch ever, but the relationship between the two grew immensely between them. I couldn't help but sit up from my chair and just root for Nishikata for being a good person in those scenes. I also want to give props to Yuki Kaji. Even though he's known for his voice as Aaron Yeager, his childlike voice makes Nishikata feel much more expressive. Yuki Kaji himself loves this show, and he hopes more people can watch it. He also wished for a movie and then the Moto series to be adapted soon. He feels genuinely happy in taking part of the show. Even though it's not very popular, I'm happy that he took in the role. So as of writing the script for this, the movie did come out in the states, so I want to talk a little bit about the movie. The movie, I believe, actually serves as the conclusion to the series. I don't know if that's true, but the finale of the movie signified that it was where it seemed like the last part of the story. This movie signified another situation that we had never looked at before, which is a loss. When the both of them lose something that they've kept on looking at for a while, they had to move on. Even though Takagi is the one that usually, the one that acts very adult-like, Nishikata is the one that actually comforts her. The development between these two in the movie signifies how they needed to deal with that situation and move on from it. They both grow into character and begin to like one another even more than they had before. The movie's ending was a little abrupt and there definitely could have been more content, but for its finale, it was pretty solid. Now back to the overall aspect of season 3. This anime itself was hidden so much under the big three. Dress Up Darling essentially caused many people to overshadow other romance anime that season, and it just didn't feel fair to the amount of attention the show got. While it was good for the anime community, I felt that the third season of Takagi should have been noticed more. If you haven't watched season 3 or the series itself, then this is a definitely a really good romance series to watch. Romance shows don't have to be spicy to be a good romance show. Wholesomeness can work too, so hopefully you can give this show a watch. Also, if this shit ain't on the nominations, at least for the Country World Awards, then fuck the Hey y'all, thanks for watching the video again. Just wanted to say thanks for watching these videos, and it'll probably be a little bit before I make another one. 
I'll probably look or make a video about the Crunchyroll Awards since that's pretty soon. But hope you all enjoyed and Happy New Year!